Mr. Gill, uh, or should I say Roaring Kitty, uh, turned $53,000 into almost $50 million, uh, and that's what you would call some deep you-know-what value. <laughs> of course, we know that not all those Jeez, who invested in everybody. stocks share the same Jeez, success well, story. Hit the home run. Don't go for the grand slam. Hit the home run. You've already won. You've won the game. Yeah. You're done. Well, there are a lot of short sellers out there that have been borrowing stock they didn't have. In other words, yes, I think there are dynamics shorts, where yeah. retail investors can get caught, but it's 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 really a, a dynamic where I think this is going after bad companies. But here's what's interesting: it is actually changing what Wall Street does, how it does it. There's a report on Bloomberg saying that various prime brokers are tightening the requirements necessary in order to short some of these so-called meme stocks. Who are doing a great job of wasting my time? You're going to filibuster. You should run for the Senate. First question you have to ask yourself is, why is there a high shortage? Uh, surprise. <laughs> Generals gathered in their masses, just like witches at black masses. People are sitting at home getting the checks from the government, okay? And this fair share is a bullshit concept. It's just a way of attacking wealthy people who we all got to work together and pull together. Don't think for a minute that hedge funds haven't hired people and put them in these chat rooms to get the flames of these things going. These hedge funds are pulling their hair out because there's no panic selling. These people, you know, they may have bought it four dollars, sat for four hundred dollars, went back to forty, went to three fifty, back down to a hundred and ten, and they have not sold. All they've done is bought more. In the deep fucking cheers, all y'all. There's no answer for that. There's no, they, they, you know, it, it is like art of war mastery by a bunch of idiots who should know better. It's like, oh yeah, I'll buy more. I don't care. My paycheck came in. I can afford two more shares. You got maybe. 10 million people doing this who now own probably more than 100 million shares eventually you know they might own everything if they keep taking whatever's being offered there might not be anything left except synthetics in the big funds accounts when it comes to hedge funds stevie cohen now unshackled by the sec after being suspended for two years from the hedge fund industry he's starting off the new year with a bang as he prepares to open up a new wall street firm well, it was hard to get him they never charged him criminally they took down his firm but now because they didn't get him tr criminally he's back they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying lobbying to get what they want stop pushing your shit it's a rigged casino the casino's rigged and their friends make all the profits if you and i charles took our car title and xeroxed it a hundred times and sold it to a hundred people and each of them paid us cash we, but we only had one car that would be a good analogy to what naked short selling is in texas simple version we call that stealing how do you know that gamestop executives are going to take advantage of this situation and build a brand and make a pivot just like netflix did when they were shipping out cds in the mail you don't because know they no have evidence. no idea you piece of shit how can you have 136 percent short interest how can you be short 40 percent more shares than actually exist in the world? to a wall street mathematician that's the game that has been played for years and that game came undone at the top of the pecking order was Melvin Kaplan. His trades are mimicked and copied by umpteen other hedge funds that follow along. Stock that you buy at 20 can go down 20 points, and a stock that you sell short at 20 can go up an infinite amount. And you don't think about that until you've gone short, and it goes up about 10 or 15 points. <laughs> then you don't have the stock lined up to be borrowed, and maybe you have a whole bunch of fails to deliver and that sort of thing. And then you don't sleep very well. Somebody's running something that's semi-fraudulent. They're probably pretty good at it, and they're working full-time at it. Very tough psychological game to play. That would be one of the most irritating experiences in the world, to figure out something is crooked and foolish and so forth, and then short it at X and have it go to 3X. Now you're watching all these happy crooks splashing around in your money while you're meeting margin calls. The more shorts, the better, because they have to buy the stock later on. Oh. <laughs> and at that point, you, you literally have to embrace the reality of how dire the situation Your is. Your last price target on GameStop was $10. It's now sitting at almost 150 at this point. What do you make of those moves? I mean, I was being generous at $10. I mean, and you know what? Call me a boomer. You're a boomer. 
practically, you are. Early June of 2019, the price of GameStop stock declined below what I thought was its fair value. I invested in GameStop in 2019 and 2020 because, as I studied the company, I became more and more confident in my analysis. I grew up playing video games and shopping at GameStop, and I plan to continue shopping there. I believe that GameStop has the potential to reinvent itself as the ultimate destination for gamers within the rapidly growing $200 billion gaming industry. As for what happened in January, others will have to explain. It's alarming how little we know about the inner workings of the market. I also want to say that I support retail investors' right to invest in what they want, when they want. As for me, I like the stock. Look at the story here, right? Look at the logic of this situation. Who is it that owns this company with us, right? Not only was it me, you, your brother, your sister, your cousin, the people that run the local services at your every community that you depend on, it's also two of the biggest hedge funds in the world. And how do the two of the biggest hedge funds in the world operate? Do you think they do it with paper-handed bitch is working for them? Do you think that they, they take all of their fucking gains and they turn it all, all into paper-handed bitch money? and put it in a fucking suitcase and put it in a safe and lock the door. Do you think that's how hedge funds work, you fanny? And that's what the paper-handed bitches think. No, it isn't. I'll tell you what, what hedge funds do. They keep their money in assets. They want to control the biggest companies in the world. How do you get to be the biggest company in the world? Where's GME starting from? The greatest story ever told. What are we going to do when we're sitting with BlackRock as our eight buddies and Vanguard as our eight buddies? on 32 trillion dollars worth of assets. Well, what we're going to do, probably, is we're going to let Ben Vanguard and BlackRock own what will become the biggest company in the world, while we then turn into paper-handed bitches at 19 million dollars per share when we've reached a market cap of Go fuck yourselves, everybody who didn't believe in this! We're going to own the biggest company in the fucking world and we're going to call it whatever the fuck we want. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want because we're not listening to any of the shit that people put us through in 1998, in 2008 and they're trying to fucking do it again now. And we're not taking it anymore. We're not taking it anymore. We know what you did. We know what you did to our communities. We know what you did to our country. We know what you did to our countries. You know what, you know what you did. We know how you fuck things up now. And you're going to get fucked up. And we're never, ever, ever going back to reasonable land. Okay. So, that's your technical analysis for today.